And most of the other runners, I would say, will, will certainly benefit far greater than Northerly. But um, look, you've got to be in it to win it, and we'll be there. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Fred. Fred Kersley joining us there. Uh, Brendan, I'll tell you something. We're standing up in the middle of the grandstand. A terrific crowd in for the Turnbull Stakes. And I think they're about to give the, the mighty horse from WA a big roar. Richard, when you heard that interview with Fred, he almost intimated that the horse had to do more to, to warrant a start in the Caulfield Cup. Yeah, I don't know why. He's he, a very clever man with his words. He is, he is, and he, he'll keep everyone confused for as long as possible. I'm not sure why he wants to attempt the Caulfield Cup when the Cox Plate looks at the horse's mercy, and uh, it would be very difficult to run in both. But my leaning will be, I think Fred will go to the Cox Plate. I don't think he'll go to the Caulfield Cup, but hey, he's a great horse, but he knows that horse better than anyone will ever know him. And what a horse he is. He just will not lie down. He's an absolute prize fighter. He sure is. Well, speaking of good horses, there's a horse called Clangalang, which uh, bolted away to win the Spring Stakes at Newcastle. It's prepared by Gerald Ryan, who's with Joe McKinnon. Gerald, he was impressive in winning the Spring Stakes at Newcastle. 2,000 metres today. I don't think 2,000 worry him a great deal, Joe. You know, he goes to sleep in his races. He can quicken. Um, he's out of a mare that won four races. I think the shortest she won was 2,200 metres. So no, I've got no fears about him running the journey, no. Not an overwhelmingly strong bunch he meets today. He's already beaten them. Well, we say that every year, you know. They don't look a good bunch of three-year-olds. In five months' time, they end up being a good bunch of three-year-olds, you know. But I think he's nearly about the only horse in the race that have beaten every other horse in the race. So, you know, I, I just think the horse has done well. He's won pretty with pretty much authority at Newcastle and he's done well, trained on good and I think they'd be horse look better than him in the yard. He's just done terrific the horse. Lenny Beasley rides him for the first time? Yeah, he's been hard to get a jockey to stick with the horse. Um, uh, it's got to see him how to ride in Melbourne today, but you know, Lenny's pretty adaptable. He wins group one races. He won the race last year, so I think he'll find him all right. Yeah. What are the likely instructions, Gerald? Well, I'll just ride him how he's travelling, how the pace is, you know. I could picture the horse probably running fifth or sixth, so to, really relaxed and off the bit in the race and uh, he'll, he'll quicken, he'll quicken as good as anything in the race I reckon. Good luck. Okay, thanks okay. Joe. Yeah. Gerald Ryan talking about Clangalang's chances in the Group 1 Spring Champion Stakes. Joe and there's sportsman on screen. Richard, what a day it's been for Greg Hickman if this wins. It would catch just an unbelievable story. Uh, it is an unbelievable story. He's only got a, a small string. It's unbelievable already. I mean, a small string of horses. Royal Perler of course uh, knocking up winning the flight stakes there for him and to come back here and, uh, and win the second group one of the day, a dream come true for any trainer. A winner of the Peter Pan two runs back and placed behind Masquerado, who I thought had a chance from the Graham Rogerson yard number four at its most recent start. We've seen Klangalang, we've seen Sportsman. Takas is an interesting runner after its uh, amazing performance at Newcastle when blowing the start by so far, but making up a lot of ground. There's the six platinum scissors, a full brother to reduce choice. I'm tipping against platinum scissors today. I think, uh, I think the step up and he... He ran a big race last start against the older company. I don't know. I just would like to see him, uh, him in another start or two. I, I just got a feeling he's not going to do it today. Speaking of blue bloods, we saw the five there tack as a half brother to a slipper winner in guineas. What do you yeah. make of this horse? Well, it was a very good run in the spring stakes. Uh, once again, he, it was a big jump in, uh, in effort from him, big jump in rating, really, from tack -Ass there. And whether he can bring it all together again, today is another thing. I'm, I'm just not sure if I want to back him either. I'm, I'm looking around the two of those. I like Sportsman. I really do. I think he can pull off the double today because I think Sportsman's just primed to do something really good. OK, well, I'll lean Masquerado's way the four we haven't seen, but they're no, getting he does close too to much wrong. Does he? No, I think so. Now, how can you argue then when he comes out and wins the gliding I know, platinum scissors? I know, but he, he, he ran down the straight like a drunken sailor and you just can't afford to do that at Group 1 level. He's learning, he's improving. I know. Cheltenham's not too far away. This is the fifth race on the card. Hilton Donaldson is your caller. Right, Brendan, they're getting set quickly here in Adelaide for the first leg of the treble race number five. Unitab, Lawful Poker goes up. Colin Special comes forward. They're just about ready. Vishino walks up and Lockie will be the last. He looked good in the parade, very, very fit, so I'm going to put him on top. Number six, Platinum Scissors. He was probably a victim of circumstances last start in the gloaming stakes. Probably took up the running a bit far from home. And uh, his, his run was quite good in running second there to Masquerado. I think he'd ridden a little bit quieter here today, although he's got an awkward draw. I don't know where he's going to get to in the run, but he looked OK in the parade, so extra distance should suit. So I've got him on t uh, in the numbers there. Although number three, Clangalang. Very, very consistent horse, this bloke. Probably take him uh, for granted a little bit. Good winner of the spring stakes at Newcastle last start. And the way he raced 
races. Shouldn't have any trouble with the 2,000 metres here. And number four, Masquerado, lovely horse. Good winner of the Glaming last start. And a good ride here for Paddy Payne from the good draw. He'll be in it for a long way. But you can give good chances to sportsmen who did look good here. And the two fillies, I think they've uh, both got a lot of ability. 11, Soprano and 12, Lavishly. Probably the pace of the race might just bring them undone. But there's been good money on course for Soprano at longer odds. Bog on five, six, three and four. OK, and as Wayne mentioned, Soprano with that support, still very good value on the tote. Platinum Scissors is firmed and even further and remains value on the tote. Masquerado is likewise value on the tote. So, interesting race, recruiting with some support at much longer odds from specking there. At Flemington, uh, a couple of the runners that got home, Fields of Omar, uh, Magical Miss was ridden a bit upside down today. From a Cups perspective, what did you make of it, Richard? Hard to find anything that'll beat Northerly. I mean, he's, uh, he's basically sat up on the pace. He's taken the lead early, just before the corner, and... Uh, very hard to go past them. There was nothing, no excuses for those behind him. They will have to run in a race where they don't meet Northerly, and that's uh, that, that's a be interesting how you dodge him because we don't know which way he's going at the moment. Andrew Bensley, do you know which way he's going? Northerly, I'd say that is uh, definitely going to the Caulfield Cup. Uh, in regard to some of the others, Don Eduardo. The horse will go to the Caulfield Cup. They've had no excuses. Uh, they'll wait and see how the horse pulls up in the next couple of days. But at this stage, Caulfield Cup right on the agenda. Magical miss. The quote from Bart Cummings. Decision tomorrow morning, which we'll have on Racing Retro in confirmation. But at this stage, more likely the Caulfield Cup. And he said D. Oliver should be riding. Fields of Omar uh, will go to the Caulfield Cup. A jockey unknown and Tony McAvoy uh, wasn't going to say who it who it's going to be we'll follow that one up overnight and sadly 60 seconds who was in contention for the Caulfield Cup did bleed during today's race well that horse self uh, mayor won't be running in this year's Caulfield Cup Brendan but magical miss at this stage destined for the Caulfield Cup what a mouth-watering clash that will be. That comes along a fortnight to from today. You'll be able to watch all that plus much more on Sky Racing. After this you'll be able to watch the spring champion. No. Continued backing for Platinum Scissors. Clear cut on course favourite value on the tote. John Tapp, who have you got with you? I have Mark Fraser camping with me, Brendan. Mark is the Sydney stable foreman for Graham Rogerson. And uh, he's had a lot to do with this beautiful looking horse, Masquerado. If looks count, Mark, he'll win this race by four lengths. Yeah, well, I mean, he's a lovely type of horse. You know, he always has been. He's continued to improve. So uh, I think in the birdcage last week, somebody else said that as well. So uh, fingers crossed. Now, he won the gloaming in good style, but he showed that he's still very green and very inexperienced. He ran in badly near the line. Not a good habit. No, we put this sort of shadow roll on him, just trying to get him to sort of get his head down and to relax and sort of to hit the line. So uh, that was his first start with a shadow roll on, and, you know, hopefully he can go good again today. Yeah. Is he a horse that uh, is really just putting it all together? Still yeah. a few pieces missing? Yeah, it was only at the seven starts. I mean, he won his first two in town very impressively, and then uh, he sort of take that next step up, and he sort of... We weren't quite sure how far he wanted in that, and he sort of went to 1,000 to 15 to 19, so hopefully uh, for us to do that, it's a good sign. You're quietly confident? Oh, to a group one, it's, uh, yeah, it's hard to be confident in the big races. Yeah. Patrick Payne's engagement for the horse is an interesting one. I presume he's testing him with a possibility of riding him in Melbourne. Correct. You know, obviously, if all things go well today, we're looking to go to Melbourne. Um, Patrick will probably retain the ride in Melbourne if, you know, things are going well, so uh, we'll, we'll find out shortly. Good, Mark. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks, John. Mark Fraser Campen, stable foreman Graham Rogerson, and uh, the stable will be represented by one of the best looking horses in Australia, Masquerado. Brendan? Tappy, he's the firm second elect on course. Bit of specking longer odds for Addendum, Monte Grand, and Civics at much longer odds. I tell you what, I'm, I'm laying the favourite. You I'm, are? I'm, if I was a bookie, I'd be laying the favourite. And I know that this is my make or break race, this. I either go to the front with my punting or I don't. <laughs> or I get so far behind I can't catch up. Uh, all those seconds. This race brought to you by Hancock Tyres, among our team of sponsors today, along with Emirates Park Start and Mitsubishi's Triton. Ian Craig standing by to call the second of our Group 1's Epsom Day 2002. This is the spring champion. Righto, Brendan, thanks a lot. And they're moving in for the spring champion stakes and uh, platinum scissors, the one that's certainly wanted in the ring. Better on the toe to New South Wales at $3.20.
Been a big go for him in the last five minutes, Platinum Scissors. He looks absolutely magnificent. A cull by Dane Hill from Shantha's Choice. Jimmy Cassidy aboard for Gay Waterhouse, and he certainly won't be beaten on the score of fitness or looks. So Platinum Scissors, the popular pick here from Mascarado, number four, who's 490 on the Toten NSW. 190 for the place. This race last year went to Viking Ruler, beat Evander and Silver Baron. Universal Prince won it in 2000, Fairway in 99, Dignity Dancer 98, Tie the Knot 97. Horses like nothing like a Dane have won it. Dane Wynn, St. Jude, Starless Century, Bozam, Sir Dapper, Kingston Town. Oh, it's been a good race. Previous of the day, won by Manor Hill. Number three, beat six, Spillway, five, Forest Jim and seven, Carnegie Express. Now, only about um, four to come up here, including Sportsman, a stable mate of Royal Perler, who won the flight stakes today. Now, in goes Clangalang. Dean joins us, only three to move in here, just repeating that uh, Platinum says is very, very heavily supported late. Now, Sportsman is right, up comes Takas. And addendum, Chris Munster's mount will be the last to move forward. The 2002 thrifty spring champion stakes. Two fillies in the event, lavishly and soprano. And they're all in. Ready. Racing this time. Recruiting on the inside jump quickly, away well Masquerado and so too Sportsman, lavishly not far away. And Takas going forward quickly and so too as they settle is Clangalang, followed by Best Score. Addendum very wide out, then Monte Grande followed by Civics. About a length and a half further back is Soprano and a length and a half the favourite Platinum Scissors. Compact field, however, into the back of the track by the 1600 and Clangalang goes to the lead. Sportsman is running second, third recruiting, Best Score is fourth, followed by a and then Mascarado. Length and a half end to Takas at about three off the rails as I speak, followed by lavishly Monte Grande and then Soprano. A length further back in the field is Civics and one and a half to the heavily back favourite Platinum Scissors. They race to the 1200 and the spring champion stakes and it's Addendum. A half length on Takas. Beatman had been pratted very wide, so he moves Takas up to the quarters of the leader. Sportsman third, Clangalang fourth, then best score recruiting. Two to Mascarado, just over a length and coming Monte Grande, followed closely by Lavishly, and a couple of lengths further away in the field, is on the inside Civics, and on its outside is Soprano, and two and a half to Platinum Scissors, it had oh, it'd be 20 lengths off the lead, I'd reckon coming down the side of the track, and going to the 700, a little or no change in the order, and it's addendum from Takas three sports, one and then Clangalang best score, two recruiting, one Masquerado Lavishly on the outside of Monte Grande, followed by Soprano Civics, and Platinum Scissors is still last of all, but he's about to make a move. I'd reckon J.A. Cassidy he's pulled the whip on him as they come round the corner. Into the stretch now, and Takas raced to the lead from Addendum. Then Sportsman followed by Clangalang weaving clear. Mascarado joining in, so too lavishly, and Soprano down the outside, and then Platinum Scissors. Takas at the 200 is just in front, under siege. However, here's Soprano. Soprano and also Platinum Scissors. Platinum Scissors, Soprano. The cold is going to outplug the filly and Platinum Scissors wins the spring champion stakes. Platinum Scissors beats Soprano, Mascarado, Clangalang, Lavishly and Takas. Further away, Sportsman Monte Grande, Civic's best scorer. Long margin addendum and recruiting at the tail of the field. The favourite is too good. Number six, Platinum Scissors. He knew what he was doing, J.A. Cassidy, didn't he? He was just content to ride him quietly and he got a lovely split he just gave him a hard crack coming to the corner oh he's a good colt this fella magnificently bred looked absolutely 110 percent on the way to the barrier and aided by a great j.a cassidy ride has been able to take out the spring champion stakes a full brother to uh, redute's choice of course by dane hill from shantha's choice raced by the tealy assets Proprietary Limited Syndicate and bred by Mr. M.A. Yassin, trained by Gay Waterhouse. And the numbers are official 6, 11, 4, and 3. Platinum scissors first. Number 11 is second. Just for a few fleeting moments, the filly 
Looked as though she might, might be able to take it out, but the cult was a wee bit too strong. She's by Carnegie from Regal Odyssey, Soprano, John Hawkes, Corey Brown. And third going to number four, Mascarado. Patrick Payne riding the straight strike cult for Graham Rogerson. And number three, Clangalang was the official fourth. 6 11 4 3, and the totes officially read this way. $3, $1.50. Number 11 paid $3.50. And number four paid $1.90. Okay. Cordilla, 25. Right, Gay. I know you're a very good judge in running, but I'll bet you had a few anxious moments as the field came down by the 800 when he was under a bit of pressure. Johnny, you would have liked to have been a fly on the wall when I was standing in that room watching that ride. But that's why Jimmy Cassidy, love him or hate him, is one of Australia's great rockies. You know, he can be last or he can be lead. If he gets beaten, he's a fool. If he wins, he's a genius. Today, yeah, he's a genius. Exactly. But even coming up the rise, he put a couple around his tail and it, it, he really didn't react for a long time. Oh, he's the most, rela he's a, he's a, he's most switched off horse. That's yeah. why he's such a great... You make a really outstanding derby horse if ever there's been a derby horse with a capital D. Yeah, that's true. And, and he just... Uh, Max Presnell asked me once, he said, I oh, want you Melbourne Cup horse. I said, platinum scissors. He said, oh. Yeah. Anyway. Now, he's had a, a fairly searching preparation and a long way to go yet. He must be pretty tough. Oh, he's very tough and still quite immature. You've really just seen the beginnings of a really great horse. Congratulations. Thanks, Johnny. Gay Waterhouse, trainer of uh, the horse with a name that uh, race callers can trip over sometimes. It's a real mouthful, Brendan. Platinum Scissors. Platinum Scissors. I'm just going through the different uh, thoughts of how you can... I suppose it get a bit dyslexic and come out with a few letters in the wrong place. Now, Larry Olsen, you're standing by. We've saw, seen the pumper at his brilliant best. Racing this time in the Edward Manor fold, and they went away in a good line too. Uh, Fuji Dancer getting back after the start. Takila Knowledge is one of the first out. Taken on by Coupe, pushing forward now from Null Ultra and further back, Make Me Strong. Cocktail Evening in on the fence and further back, Milanova Itsudini, followed by La Bella Dame. Further back, Takula Diamond, followed by Centre of Romance in Trouble, got checked. Further back, then Ride from Lash, third last from Fuji Dancer. Bay Ivy last of all, 1,200 out. Takila Knowledge slows them in front, nearly a length to Coupe. Third on the fence, Cocktail Evening, followed by Null Ultra Run. Running fourth, a length and a half, it's Houdini. Rivers travelling forward around the outside. Milanova coming away from the rail. Then on the outside, Make Me Strong, a length and a half, Tarkula Diamond. Three deep around La Bella Dame over on the inside, then set of Romance. Two lengths to Lash Bap, third last, second last, Fuji Dancer. Two Bay Ivy last of all, 800 metres out. No change, and the leader is Tarkula Knowledge, a half coupe. Rive has been off the track most of the way, goes up third. A locked away cocktail evening from Null Ultra, followed by La Bella Dame. Further out then comes... Make Me Strong, Tarkula Diamond pushed off the track, coming around the turn, starting to make some ground behind those in the green colours, is the favourite lash from Fuji Dancer, Milanova held up, in the straight, Coupe going up now to Tarkula Knowledge, hung up on the fence, trying to get out as Cocktail Evening, La Bella Dame coming at them quickly, two lengths and Make Me Strong and Lash coming down the middle, but it's Coupe just in front from La Bella Dame, then Make Me Strong is running on and now Lash is starting to hit Top Gear, running on with Fuji Dancer out wider, Coupe in front from La Bella Dame, Lashed and Fuji Dancer with their runs. Coupe in front. On the outside, Fuji Dancer diving. Oh, they hit it. Coupe and Fuji Dancer. Not much in this. Lashed is third the middle. Further back then, Make Me Strong. Followed by Milanova. Behind those, La Bella Dame, Null Ultra. Cocktail Evening. It's Houdini. Back behind them, Tarkula Diamond, Bay Ivy. Well back was Rive. Followed by Tequila Knowledge. Set of Romance didn't have much luck in the early point. For Coupe, Vin Hall, 39.30, 9.60, or 5 Fuji Dancer, Karen McAvoy, 9.10, 2.40, 2 Lashed, 1.60 for third. Now the Fuji Dancer and the Lashed, 4.5, 2 are up. Numbers up here, 4.5 and 2, 4.5 and 2, and Coupe. Just home, number 4, written by Vinnie Hall for Matty Allerton. And they're loading at the Gold Coast for race number four. The favourite surfing Joe at four, a win, 160 a place. Coupe racing forward, getting to the front. The challenges were Fuji Dancer and Lashed. They came very late, but not there in time. And it's about a half-head decision here for Coupe just hanging on from Fuji Dancer and Lashed, 4-5-2. For Coupe, 39-30 a win, 960 a place. Five Fuji Dancer, 242 Lash, 160. The Quinella. 154.50, exacted 342.10.
The 452 trifecta, $1,840.10. First four is to come. Correct weight, Newcastle, the third on three, five, two. Five. Fleming's in a turnbull down on the inside and northerly one of the first out uh, beginning well is like a gov with dash for cash and magical miss is going forward around the outside when they settle into stride and feels that omar was going back towards the rear with 60 seconds as like a gov took the lead now magical miss pushing forward and behind them northerly from dash for cash fourth followed by maguire henderson bay three deep around the outside from don eduardo helene vitality followed for the back and the race by uh, the outside lester thunderwing and then came fantastic Further back then came Sky Heights, Rain Gage, 60 seconds, and Fields of Omar last of all, 1,400 to go. Like a Gov goes out two and a half in front of Northerly. Magical Miss a length away third. She had to wheeze back there. They're followed by Dash for Cash, fourth, followed by Maguire. A length further back in the race then Don Eduardo from Henderson Bay, Helene Vitality, Lester Thunderwing, Wonder Sky Heights from Fantastic. Two lengths further back, 60 seconds, followed by Rain Gage, and Fields of Omar, two lengths last of all. At the 1,000 metre mark, and it's like a gov by two. Northerly second, the favourite, a length and a half. Maguire, a length and a dash for cash. Fourth, two lengths further back then in the field came Don Eduardo. They're followed by Magical Miss. She's gone back sixth on the outside. Henderson Bay, three deep, two lengths further back in the race. Sky Heights. Helene Vitality on the inside, followed by Lester Thunderwing. Then a gap to Pentastic, further back Rain Gage, 60 seconds. And Fields of Omar, last of all. 700 out before the turn and Northerly striding quickly on the outside. Goes up to like a gov, followed out wide by Maguire. They're followed by Dash for Cash. Don Eduardo getting up on the inside. Magical Miss further back from Rain Gage. Then Fields of Omar in behind those. They're followed by Sky Heights down at the 300. Northerly got to the front from Maguire. Dash for Cash. Magical Miss. Fields of Omar from a long way back is weaving through. Northerly takes the lead from Magical Miss. Then Fields of Omar about to get out late. Northerly in front of Dash for Cash. Magical Miss. Fields of Omar into the clear but spotting them a giant start. Northerly the leader from Dash for Cash. Fields of Omar to third northerly in front and northerly northerly has beaten dash for cash close for third fields of omar fantastic and a lean vitality then further back magical miss followed by the heavy others don eduardo then maguire back behind them lester thunderwing rain gauge then sky heights further back in the race then came like a gov who knocked up from henderson bay and 60 seconds is down near the tail one northerly greg charles 270 140 eight dash for cash second 450 for third Number six at 220, number 10 at 430, number three, 1890. Sneem, best back runner, Gold Coast, 210, 110. And dash for cash. And Fields of Omar from last on the turn has got into third placing. Numbers are up, 186 and 22.3. Northerly having a battle to beat off dash for cash with Fields of Omar. Closing late to be beaten into third placing, beaten about two lengths. 186. Take over, Matty. We'll see you on the Caulfield Cup in two weeks from now. And the totes one northerly, Greg Charles, 271.48 eight dash for cash, 456 fields of Omar, 230. The Quinella, 24.60, exact to 41.50. The trifecta, 221.80. The double four and one, that was Coupe and Northerly, 149.50. Special dip not required. First four is to come. Six to Randwick, the spring. A weight pull on him. Uh, most particularly fields of Omar and Dash for Cash. They've got four and a half kilos difference in the Caulfield Cup. Magical Miss only has a kilo and a half pull. So uh, it brings them into line with Northerly, doesn't it? It's going to be a wonderful race. All in with the exception of Venus was her name over at the start. I wonder whether she might be coming out starters on the platform if she does come out the sub Azuga Chaka no she's coming in now here's Venus was her name coming up into the line I don't know if she was undergoing a vets test there she might well have been but she's gone up into the line now and they're set to go 
Wide open race, they're off now. Venus was her name, a little slow from the outside and Purple Groove's going to drift back early. Zabil's Angel, one of the first out with Wyndham Special going up to join her. A length away in the field then came Romano Star Tributor. Crimson Gem about fifth or sixth the rail and they're followed by two lengths away, Reactive Self Interest and then Gentle Genius half a length to Pfizer. They're running quickly to Embraceable You outside Hosanna and then Purple Groove and they're followed by Tickle Mai. Uga Chaka back in the ruck and last of orders, Venus was her name. As they came up the side and Sabeel's Angel leading three quarters Romano Star, Wyndham Special third Crimson Gem the rail and then came Tributor. Three lengths away Reactive and then Self Interest. Two and a half lengths away Pfizer outside Gentle Genius. Four lengths break then to Hosanna followed by Embraceable You and then Purple Groove getting to the outside to launch her challenge followed by Uga Chaka well back and hard ridden. So is Tickle My under the whip and Venus was her name. They corner at the 500 metres now. Crimson Gem got up on the inside to tackle for the lead with Wyndham Special then Romano Star Reactive Self Interest starting to come home and Gentle Genius is into the clear and Purple Groove is behind her with Hosanna Self Interest took the lead from Wyndham Special at the 200, down the outside Hosanna is coming, Gentle Genius is flying and Purple Groove Hosanna's raced up wide out to go to the lead from Self Interest, Gentle Genius, Purple Groove and Hosanna, Hosanna's won it by three quarters to Gentle Genius the Cameron form holding up, Purple Groove is up there too, followed by Self Interest and then came Venus was her name trailed by Tickle My Tributor Wyndham Special followed by Crimson Gem and Reactive Pfizer and Uga Chaka well back is the Beals Angel followed by Embraceable You and Romano Star Hosanna's won the race written by Darren Gouch a double for the Gouch she'll pay 850 and 280 coming with a powerful burst from well back Second placing to 19, Gentle Genius, Greg Childs. They ran fourth and seventh respectively, each of them unlucky in the Cameron handicap. And although I think there's something like a four kilos difference in favour of Gentle Genius, Hosanna has proven too good. Third place going to number nine, Purple Groove, written by Nash Rewilder, who's come from well back in what was a very fast run race. Numbers are one, 19 and nine. Hosanna for John Hawks and Darren Gouchy. Nice to see him in the winner's circle in the Group 3 after last week's nasty fall last Saturday at Mooney Valley. Uh, 119 and 9. There's the interim details starting to come through. Unitab, we just await those. Quinellas are there, exactors and trifecta details. Now, Cheltenham is our next port of call and we're off uh, counting down towards the Group 1 Epsom handicap. The runners have arrived in the mounting yard for the Group 1 Epsom handicap. That's the details at Cheltenham. And only two of them in the yard at the moment. Young Michael Rod has his chance today to step into the Group 1 winner's circle. Here he is with Joe McKinnon. Zabara looks a very good lightweight chance in the Epsom this afternoon, Michael. Yeah, he definitely does, Joe. You know, he drops down from 53 to 49 and a half. Uh, it was a great win last start. He really exploded away from it. It was quite impressive. So he's, he's got to have some knockout chance here today. You'd be looking forward to this opportunity at Group 1 level in Sydney. You've been winning Group 1 races just about everywhere else. New Zealand last weekend on prize gen. Yeah, I've had a pretty good trot just recently and um, it's great that Mr Denham's given me this opportunity to, um, to to step out here today and see what we can do. Is this your first ride in the Epsom? Uh, yes, it is. What would it mean to win an Epsom, Michael? Oh, it'd be fantastic. I, words wouldn't explain it. You seem very calm before these big races. Nothing seems to phase you, Michael, at this top level. Oh, it's, doesn't, you don't really have to get worked up over anything. It's sort of another day at the office, as to say. It's just a bit busier. Good luck. Thank you very much. Okay. That's one of the most promising young riders in Australia at the moment, Michael Rod, and he's aboard Zabara, a big lightweight hope in the Epsom this afternoon. And Joey, in on-course betting, it remains good value on the total, albeit it's east a couple of points on course. Interesting race when we look at tactics as the runners begin to uh, enter the mounting. Uh, Richard Defire, I know you're very keen on, similar to what they're betting on course. Yeah, I love Defire. He takes up a position anywhere. I really warm for this.